So my wife says, I live in the past. <clears throat> and it's true. History is my passion. I enjoy studying it and writing about it. So it was a big deal for me in 2009 when my family received one of the first Century Farm Awards in our district, East Alone. We didn't have a lot of competition, mind you. Virtually the entire area surrounding our place was abandoned during the drought of the 20s and the dirty 30s. They say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different result. My family received two bronze plaques for it, and I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> As it turned out, getting the awards was just the beginning of a journey. As I dug deeper into my family history, I became curious about what had happened to the settlers who once lived north and east of our farm, pioneers from the US, Europe, and out east, in a community formerly known as Kinnendale. First settled in 1908, Kinnendale was named for its founding postmaster and was home to a school and a store that served over 200 homesteaders. Doomed by drought and desolation, only a handful of settlers hung on until the Second World War, most of them my family members. Although irrigation has fueled a rebirth here, the history of Kinnendale has nearly been forgotten. I was also curious about the former village of Bow City, across the Bow River from the hamlet of Bow City. In 1914, the village boasted a bustling coal mine, a three-story hotel, and 125 residents. Today, it is mostly pasture land, its residents having moved across the river to a new settlement, the hamlet, during the dry years of the 20s and 30s. The more I dug, the more I learned, the more questions I had. Who were these people? Where did they go? Why did they leave? And why didn't I learn about any of this in school? Being a nerd with a touch of OCD, I was determined to learn more. In my search for answers, I visited archives across Alberta and spent countless hours glued to the computer combing through digitized newspaper collections. Eventually, I pieced together enough information to publish my first essay, Bow City, the Village Born Unlucky. However, that was only one chapter in a much greater story. Photography is another hobby of mine, and over the years, I traveled the southeast with my wife and with Pilsner Club alumnus Greg Ferris taking pictures and seeing what we could see. As the research and photos piled up, I concluded I should probably do something with it all. It was because of this that Forgotten Alberta was born. In 2009, I launched the website Forgotten Alberta, Sites and Stories of the Southeast. The name is a nod to the southeastern region of the province, often referred to as the Forgotten Corner of Alberta. It refers mostly, however, to the disappearing history of the region's pioneer generation. After a slow start and not a lot of traffic, I discovered Twitter. And suddenly, web traffic started to climb. Then late in, two th uh, in uh, 2011, I was approached by Rose Sanchez to write a monthly column for the Prairie Post. I gladly accepted, coming to the realization that people were actually paying attention. As I continued to research, the stories of southeastern communities that had lined dormant for decades sprung back to life. Former places with names like Riverboat, Tide Lake, Sage Creek, and the Rainy Hills were revealed. In addition to their names, which dripped with deception, they all shared the same heritage of drought, desolation, destitution, and abandonment. Among the roster of lost communities was Pearsonville, marooned on the open range west of Redcliffe. A nearby irrigation project went bust here in 1914, leaving settlers high and dry. Today, the area's only residents are bovine. The surrounding pasture land is central to the Potato Gate controversy. Another lost community was Bingo, situated smack in the middle of what today is CFB Suffield. The community's stalwart settlers toughed out decades of drought and desolation only to be unceremoniously expelled in 1941 so their land could be blown up in the name of king and country. <laughs> One of Bingville's stalwarts was Carl Axis, the most famous farm leader, an Alberta communist, that you have never heard of. The firebrand farmer and political organizer ran for parliament, challenged Henry Wisewood, went to Russia, made powerful enemies, was pelted with eggs twice, and passed away on his farm under mysterious circumstances in the early 1930s. Another character of the pioneer era was Sam Whiting, who in 1911 dubbed the town of Mazano the best in the West by a dance. <laughs> a promotional wizard, Whiting mesmerized town founders, promising pro sports, prominent investors, opulent hotels, and exclusive clubs. To his credit, he delivered, initially, but it all fizzled and the boom went bust. 
150 years ago, Captain John Palliser said this region was unsuitable for agricultural settlement. Whether the captain would be honored or embarrassed that the Palliser Triangle bears his name today is anyone's guess. One thing I do know, although the region owes its name to Palliser, it's the pioneers who gave us our identity. A big part of forgotten Alberta for me is experiencing southeastern Alberta history before it's gone. Every year we journey out to the wide open spaces and visit out and away places across the region. We seek out hidden relics, ghost towns, greasy spoons, and rustic accommodations, and we capture it all on Instagram for good measure. Forgotten Alberta has given me so much. It's also given me the confidence to give back. Thanks to the blog and support from Vulcan County, a pioneer cemetery just east of our family farm has been preserved. We're also awaiting word on funding for a heritage marker at Bow City, the village, not the hamlet. Forgotten Alberta has also connected me with kindred spirits from across Alberta and North America who share my passion for local and family history. Every once in a while we get together to go digging for antique car parts and farmer's fields and lease land across the southeast. So there you go. That's my passion. If it's not yours, why isn't it? <laughs> Seriously, whatever your passion is, I encourage you to follow it. You never know where it might take you. Thank you, Medicine Hat. <laughs>